this week's highlight, we'll take a look at some challenges facing small and medium-sized businesses on the internet. We'll also talk to the trade commissioner of the Italian Trade Commission in Shanghai. A recent study shows that the number of small and medium-sized B2B players in China is growing faster than 10% annually, exceeding 31 million in 2006. But less than 2% of them are internationally trading over the internet. This week, Tsai Zhe finds out the challenges of e-commerce for Chinese SMEs and the possibilities of the online B2B market. Wang Yang has been selling bags overseas through the internet for more than two years. But still, only half of his orders are received that way. Returning customers are much fewer online than offline. They always hope to get a lower price from different sellers. Online buyers usually lack loyalty. Only one third of Wang's buyers are long-term clients, and most of them met Wang offline. Throughout China in 2006, nearly half of B2B business were carried out in trade fairs. And less than 25% of the trades were done through the internet. Very few Chinese e-commerce sites actually market their products; they just display them for potential online buyers. Typically, e-commerce sites have to provide details of hot wanted products and consumer behaviors in different countries, and promote the sellers in the demand market. But now in China, only few third-party sites like Alibaba introduces offline marketing strategies, such as trade fairs and publications, to help more online deals get made. In the e-commerce third-party market, Alibaba has market shares of close to 70%. The third major challenge for online B2B is money transaction. In the first quarter this year, only two percent of the total B2B business volume was transacted online, while the remaining 98 percent was done through the traditional transaction means. Number one reason is safety. For credit card related transactions, there's always a kind of fraud loss. Normally, for the offline merchants, the loss is like one percent. But for the online, that number is higher. Out of 100, probably one dollar eighty cents could be related to the fraud. Since 2003, some e-commerce sites started to nurture their own third-party transaction platforms, like AliPay, PayPal China, and TenPay, and now carry 65 percent of electronic transaction volume. Even though the online payment cost is two or three percentage points lower than offline, there are limitations on transactions. So far, online payments have restrictions on transaction size, which is more suitable for individual customers rather than companies. And commercial banks have yet been ready to take more risks or responsibilities in participating in the online cross-border transaction. In China, major banks like ICBC and BOC have started online B2B transaction services. Since SME's international trading is expected to double in five years' time, for online trading to improve, experts point out that besides solving the issues of customer loyalty, website information, and online payments, logistics and inventory also need to be considered. Cai Zhe for BizWatch. The European Union has been China's largest trading partner for the past three years. In 2006, bilateral trade reached 272 billion U.S. dollars, accounting for almost 16 percent of China's total foreign trade. Among the EU members, Italy has seen a rapid growth in trade with China, with 35 percent increase per year. This week, I talked to Maurizio Forte, trade commissioner at the Italian Trade Commission's Shanghai office. We discussed economic relations between the two countries. We know Sino-Italian trade relations have continued to grow in recent years. In the first half of this year, Italy actually became the third largest EU trading partner of China. However, compared with other European countries, which offer language and tax incentive, what are the differentiating factors of Italy? Italy uh, is uh, is not an、uh, English-speaking country,、mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, our language is not so difficult to learn, and there are more and more Chinese that are studying.、Uh, uh, Our language in Italy or in China. When you invest in a country, 
you have to take into consideration logistic position. If you invest in a country that is not a central position, maybe you have to spend a lot of money and a lot of time in international shipping, mm -hmm. while Italy is right in the center of the Mediterranean Sea in uh, a range uh, of uh, a couple of hours of plane, there are more than three million consumers mm -hmm. in North Africa and is in the North Europe. This is very much advantages when you're talking about shipping. So if you're shipping your goods by sea. Yeah. But if you're talking about airplanes, air flight. At the present, uh, the percentage of goods that are traveling by plane is just a small percentage. Mm -hmm. the something close to 95 percent mm -hmm. of the value of the international trade is done uh, by, by railways or by uh, trucks mm -hmm. and mainly by ship. Your geographic location can really offer logistic savings. Imagine that you want to send uh, some, uh, uh, some components from China mm -hmm. to your factory in Europe, then assemble and re-export to the United States. Mm -hmm. If your company is in Italy, uh, you can cut four days navigation of your components to reach the Italian subsidiary to be assembled and to go to the uh, United States. This is important, for example, when you, you are talking about fashion, mm -hmm. because as you know now, before we have just two collections per year. Now, for some brands, you have one collection every 15 days. Right. So in that case, just in time is ab absolutely important, and four days make a huge difference. We understand Italy is famous for world-renowned for its manufacturing, but China is also viewed as a manufacturing center in the world, so we're actually competing against each other. I mean, the fact that we are producing the same goods, mm -hmm. or actually we are working in the same fields, uh, multiply the possibility and the convenience uh, to invest each other in our countries. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, uh, the Chinese companies are very no, well known in the world to produce medium level product. But I'm sure because Chinese companies are very competitive and very ambitious, that they want also to occupy the top of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. They want to reach the high quality and the highest standard that we have in the world. So in order to have a kind of shortcut, to uh, fasten the, the, the process of reach the top level quality, to invest in a country that is, uh, as you mentioned, world renowned for his top quality, can give you a very good chance. Actually, one shortcut is to buy out companies in Italy, right? This is one possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, in that case, you can find everything already done. Mm -hmm. The company is already existing, machinery is there, the people is already hired, and there is a brand. So this is one possibility. And to buy companies in Italy, of course, is uh, a process that needs some time, mm -hmm. some uh, good advisors, but it's something that can be done with a reasonable, uh, in a reasonable time and with a reasonable cost. What are the challenges they are facing in this process? Chinese companies have had some problem with buying, say, U.S. companies, uh, regulatory, uh, legal, etc. I think, first of all, that we don't have to make confusion between uh, the big acquisition that have some strategic meaning. In that case, of course, uh, is not just an economic uh, issue but can become a political issue and things can uh, be a little bit more complicated. So you're saying if a Chinese company wanting to buy and uh, sort of like an icon? If they want to buy some strategic companies for energy mm -hmm. or for telecommunication or for some sensitive mm -hmm. sectors, it can be a problem but not for Chinese, it can be a problem for everybody because in that case each country try to be very prudent on mm -hmm. such kind of acquisition. This is normal and it happens all over the world. Yeah. But what we are talking is the acquisition of manufacturing companies that do not have a real strategic uh, position. In that case, I think that the acquisition is not so complicated. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not like uh, buying uh, some fruits in the market. We realize through our information that uh, uh, Chinese companies are active in the manufacturing fields because they really want to enter the Italian market and becoming one of the players of our market that is famous for manufacturing products. And recently, there is also a very strong trend uh, regarding machinery. Okay. Because machinery is, either is very strong for manufacturing machinery. Mm -hmm. And never forget that 60% of Italian export to China still consists of technology, right. machinery, and mechanical components. Mr. Forte believes Italy will continue to use its influence within the EU to promote free and fair trade with China.